From our workshop in the heart of Toronto, we have a steady place to program and test our rover with access to a slew of machine tools such as conventional mills and lathes, as well as 3D printers, laser cutters, and welding equipment. Because this is our first year competing in URC, we focus mainly on simplicity and elegance in design. Each subsystem has been carefully honed for maximizing performance while minimizing weight and complexity. The frame consists of a lightweight construction that uses water jet aluminum sheet metal and Lexan plastic to house the other subsystems while providing overall structural integrity to the platform. The suspension features a lightweight adaptation of the popular rocker bogey configuration called the double lambda bogey. This configuration allows for better straight line motion of the wheels. With this design there are no risks of overturning at high speeds. All the links are made with hollow tubing for its excellent ability to resist bending from combinational loading. A robust differential bar transfers joint rotational motion from one linkage to the other, providing a better distribution of load to each of the six wheels and assists in the structural integrity of the frame. The gearbox subassembly currently uses DC brush motors with about a 30 to 1 planetary reduction to produce a high level of output torque required to transport the platform over steep and rocky terrain. We are also working on an upgrade to some lighter brushless DC motors to field the rover in Utah. Wheel designs are currently underway that will feature a spring steel damping system. Since the suspension is zero damped, this will reduce the risk of damage to the linkages in the event of a large and sudden impact load on the wheels. The deformable wheels will also provide added traction, as slip seems to be a big issue with previous rover designs. We recognize the need for highly tractive tread and will be prototyping several iterations of the wheel assembly before competition. The ARM team focused on a simple solution adding only the most necessary features. Our 5 degree of freedom arm allows full dexterity to complete all of the tasks with ease. It features a modular end effector that can be swapped for both the astronaut assistance and science tasks. With our unique gripper installed, we can grab any object and trap it within its concave surfaces, including valves. The gripper is able to rotate infinitely in either direction to make loosening and tightening the valve extremely fast and simple. Taking off the gripper allows for an auger to be installed so the science task can benefit from the continuous rotation of the wrist in order to drill soil. Our goal was to create a highly reconfigurable and reliable system focusing on solid communication and visuals. We are using 2.4 GHz omnidirectional radios to transmit high definition video feeds and other signals that demand large bandwidth. Pairing these with 900 MHz access points ensures that we never lose critical control transmission. For the autonomous task, we are taking advantage of the Z stereo camera to provide us with RGB and depth data. Our approach uses ROS relays to save bandwidth and the real-time appearance-based mapping package to perform outdoor simultaneous localization and mapping which can handle varying degrees of sloped landscapes. We have successfully tested this outdoors to produce local and global cost maps to inform autonomous navigation plan. The software team is building on top of the industry-leading framework, Robot Operating System. We really like its distributed asynchronous architecture. Using ROS allows us to make use of best practices and existing software packages that perform IMU, GPS, and odometry sensor fusion, motion planning, and configurable inverse kinematics with joint limits and effort limits. We've had considerable success integrating our software in simulation, where, for example, we've simulated motors and GPS data so that we can develop upstream components which consume the data. This has played great dividends in saving time and easing development. For the science task, an auger bit is mounted onto the end of the arm. Once the sample is collected, a probe mounted on the end of the arm measures soil temperature, humidity, and electroconductivity. The sample is then brought over to a sample carousel along with distilled water, where it is tested for pH and stored for further analysis at the command station. At the command station, we'll be using the preliminary test parameters measured on the rover to evaluate which cache to use. Our main test includes a DNA and protein extraction to determine which region could have the highest potential to contain life. We'll be doing this by calculating the absorbance at 260 and 280 nanometers via a spectrophotometer and then taking their ratio to determine purity. This shotgun-like method of macromolecule detection allows us to give us a confident assessment whether there's evidence of life on Mars. We are very confident that we will be competitive at URC-17 and look forward to competing in Utah with so many incredible teams. Good luck, and we hope to see you all in Utah.